Good afternoon to all of you. And uh, express how happy I am to be here, uh, having a discussion with you, but uh, wanted to welcome my brother, a friend, uh, Prime Minister of Lesotho, to take on it, to be here with us. Uh, he took uh, uh, all the trouble and cancelled uh, other programs. So he was here because of the importance of this meeting. So thank you very much, Prime Minister. Now back to the question. First, when I was very young, that was a long, long time ago, uh, so many decades. I don't think I had uh, at the beginning the eyes to see what the problem was. I was seeing the problem, but I didn't understand it. I, could, I, I, I saw problems, I experienced problems, but um, it took some time before um, I realized that uh, these are things that uh, shouldn't be happening uh, to people, including myself. Um, and as I was growing up, I also discovered that maybe something can be done about it. And uh, that it is not uh, other people to do it uh, other than ourselves. Um, a bit of history, when I was very young, um, it started when I was about four. You can imagine at four I wasn't thinking very much about anything. I was just seeing things happen. But, uh, um, that's when my family went into exile, uh, left this country. The, the family was fine by the standard of that time. They really didn't uh, have any problems. Um, so, but we became refugees in the neighboring country. From that time, I was four. Uh, so I grew up as a refugee. Like many, many Rwandans, I, I'm sure some of them are here, but more their parents than themselves, because most of the people here are very young, probably they were born when we came back here, or, or in those early years, just before we, we came back to the country. Um, so, but I'm trying to condense, you know, what I have to say in a short time. As we grow up, therefore, as refugees and the suffering that comes with it and so on and so forth. But I think also the lessons that come with it. We, we grow up uh, experiencing things that taught us many lessons, other than going to school and here and there, we learned other things that you don't learn in school, but you learn in life, just in life. Uh, so what, to the particular question, the problem I saw was, I was even asking myself, I asked my father when I was 12, uh, whom I lost to when I was 15. But at 12, I asked my father, I said, what did we do? Why are we here? Are we in a refugee camp, feeding by way of getting ration uh, every week. He went into a long story, which explained the problem, but I, I won't repeat that, but I think it was clear that 
it was politics, it was uh, the leaders, it was, uh, in our case, it was uh, a convergence of colonial times and uh, the times of independence. And, you know, everything was just what it should not have been. So those are lessons we learned. So something was wrong. But it, it is disheartening to, to, when you see that what I'm talking about then, so many years ago, in the 60s, some of them are happening even now. You still have people Especially young people suffer the most, I imagine, and their mothers, and uh, you still have people suffering, and suffering because of politics, because of uh, all kinds of uh, bad governance. Uh, and um, yeah, today, why should, I, as I experienced it when I was four years, why should it be happening now? anywhere, doesn't have to be in, in this country, why should it happen anywhere, say on our continent, that uh, we still have refugees, we still have uh, uh, tribal conflicts, we still have all kinds of uh, things, people fighting each other than building themselves and building their countries. Uh, so, it, it's, it, for me, it, it's a, a lesson learned, a lesson that also shaped some of us um, until this day. And um, for the young people here in the room, you don't have to go through that in order to be shaped the right way as uh, Many, of, many young people at that time came out to be. To be. Uh, so you can learn even lessons of others, things that happened in time, in history, to other people. And also uh, put yourself in that position where you may think, oh, what's supposed to happen to me? Or oh, it can even happen to me. What uh, should I do? to prevent that, or what would I do if I face that, uh, to actually come through it alive and, and manage it well, but that is not just you, it becomes a, a bigger community, a bigger society that uh, we are talking about. So probably I gave you more than you asked for, but uh, thank you, Mr. Sosia, for now. Thank you, Thank you for that reflection. It is indeed to start Thank you. Thank you. It is easy to start to to hear that that political instability is still ravaging some of our African countries. And I hope that, that to the youth listening, you can reflect like some of these lessons. Right, right, honorable, right, right, sister. Right, right, Good morning and welcome again. again. If we were to take a little bit and look at Africa, it was a rich cultural heritage. In your view, how can we generate economic value and opportunities through the empowerment of our artists, entrepreneurs, and our young people? First of all, 